but let's, for the sake of learning, let's just dwell on the mistakes and the failures and the disasters and on the learning of these failures and disasters. And then let me introduce to you a bunch of losers. What kind of, what drives you to be an entrepreneur? Well, that's um, really a difficult question. I started in my uh, career when I was seven with my first business. And uh, I've started businesses ever since. I can't help when I see a gap in the market and I see a product, tie it together and you have a business. And uh, I've started more than 50 businesses and now you mentioned we're sitting a bunch of losers. No, we have had 49 successes. And then we have taken one wrong decision and that uh, cleans the slate. But it doesn't clean your story that you have backwards from what you have created. And in my time, I have, since I started, I have carried more than 350 people's salary for 20 years. Unfortunately, I'm totally bankrupt now. It was personally, I haven't got a dime. I'm starting all over again. So uh, I'm also trying it the hard way. And my dad was an entrepreneur, so I've seen it uh, when I grew up. He came home and had all these crazy ideas. Uh, most of the times it, it, didn't, uh, it didn't get to turn out like he planned. And he actually went bankrupt, uh, also the, 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 the hard way like Finn describes. So uh, people came and took everything we had and all that. So you, you would actually maybe guess that I would not uh, do something as crazy as starting my own companies, but take a job in a bank or something more safe instead. But uh, it didn't really work out that way. I, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else than starting my own businesses. So that's what I've been, done. I've been doing ever since I was 18, uh, and I co-founded around 20 businesses. I, uh, I actually started getting the sense of how to create stuff when I was around eight, nine years old, and, and we're doing computer games. So I actually started creating them because I suddenly realized one night after playing some games that maybe there are people out there actually making those games. So for the first time I realized that this was a product of other people, and I could be one of those. So then I started creating computer games. And that, that's where I got the, the sense of, you know, the creating sense uh, into my body and my mind. So the rest of my life, I've spent the time just figuring out what can I create or uh, primarily today more about where do I see problems. I always get annoyed when I see something that doesn't work. I want to fix it. Uh, and there are so many problems out there that still aren't being fixed. Uh, and there's a huge opportunity in there. So I constantly find myself, I want to change the world and if I had a day-to-day -day job, I would get bored pretty fast. So I, I really need that big vision to... It's, uh, you know, if you were creating Facebook and you wanted to go out and talk to customers, that's a bit difficult. You've got to put it out there and see if it gains traction. But you can still use the approach that Finn is describing, I think, with a minimum viable product where you just do the bare bones and then you see if it kind of has the dynamic that, 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 that works well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because are you sure like, about uh, them? Sorry? Yeah, you know, it's basically, is the pain, if it's business to business, is the pain they're having worth paying for to get fixed? That's the whole part of the business business deal, basically. Sometimes you can find the pain, sometimes you can. And sometimes you think there's a pain and you invent the pain and you convince your customers they have it and then they buy it, and then one year later you figure out, I can't, I can't convince everyone. I really can't. So maybe you've just been a really good salesman at a very early stage. But how to know that market is what I'm thinking, because you cannot know it. In, you wouldn't be an entrepreneur if you didn't take risks and have uh, an idea in your head that you might use in the market. You have to like do it in practical terms. You have to be practical as an entrepreneur. Uh, how can you how can you assess the market like you say you have to do you well um, I haven't yet met a product I couldn't go out and access the market with um, but but uh, building up Giga we were doing components on the telecom market worldwide and uh, we decided that we wouldn't assign a component that didn't have an end customer because the, the design would cost us two or three million. And we were a little startup company. We were six people. We didn't have a dime. We had lost all the money when I started as a CEO. So uh, we had three and a half million Danish partners to start from. So we, we didn't have money to make one mistake for the first three years. 
So we went out to the customers with a data sheet saying, we're going to design this. Do you want to buy it? So you all feel comfortable now that you've been speaking about your failures and oh, yeah. what you thought this and everything? This has been everything? great therapy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Finally. Finally.